Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. And if you're checking out this channel for the first time, this is something I do with my husband, Chris. We take thrift store found items and we give them new life. And here on our channel, we share the process with you all and the vision of how we get these items made over and ready to resell. Yep, we resell them here locally. We have a couple retail booths and a local antique mall. So in today's video, this is part three. Throughout the month, I am sharing thrift hauls, thrift with me's, sharing what I'm looking for when I'm out thrifting, what sells in my area. And so the part of that is sharing with you how I make these items over and get them ready to resell. And with it being summer, I did not want to take up all your all time. I wanted you to enjoy your outdoors and that we're opened up, go, go, see the world. So if you fit me into your schedule, I am happy as a lark that maybe this is your wind down time of watching me late at night. I am all good with that. So I just appreciate you all watching my makeovers. So. So in today's video, this is part three, like I said, of a thrift haul, flips, the makeovers. And so in this video, I'm sharing with you some wooden items, some metal items, how I get them painted up, I get them distressed. And in this video, I'm using a few transfers. So stay tuned and see what I do with these items. So these are some of my thrift haul finds that I share with you when I do a thrift with me or I do my weekly thrift haul. And now it is time to get these items made over. So if you are regular to my channel, do you remember some of these items for my thrift haul? I absolutely love clocks. Easels are just a great little additive and uh, who doesn't like a coffee mug tree? And now these arches are actually a dollar general for $12 fine. So I'm like, yes, please. I can paint those up along with some bookends, a blessed sign. Just absolutely love these treasures. I will admit that these caddies have been sitting around for a little while. I was kind of seeing how the ones sold that um, I had kind of been inspired by Julie of Julie Designs. One sold, one went missing, and one is still for sale. So they're kind of iffy in my area if they sell or not. But I do know that larger bird houses and primitive looking houses do sell. So I will definitely always be happy to pick these up and make these over. I know if you're regular to my channel, I repeat myself all the time. I, the first thing I do is always take off any tags, any price tags, any thrift store tags, any manufacturer's tags. Just remove any tags and please do not paint over them. <laughs> Nothing says a flipped item like painting over a tag. So of course I would have liked to take in the mechanism and the clock face out of these clocks, but they did not come apart. So here I am using some masking tape and taping over it because I'm going to be spraying these items, painting these items. I don't want to have a gooey mess. It's not real glass, it's plastic. So I definitely don't want to have to try to scrape paint off. So I'm just going to add some of this two inch dollar, dollar general tape and then take an X-Acto knife and cut off that excess. After getting that part of the prep done, and now it's time to get these clean. So I'm just going with some concentrate of super clean and hot water. These are thrift store finds. They have been laying around in a workshop. So not only are they dusty, they have been handled. You want to get any kind of cleaning, cleaning product, pledge, anything like that. You want to get anything that's going to prevent these items from taking the paint really well. You want to get that cleaned off. Then I do have a couple items that I need to get sanded. So I'm deciding like, I wonder if I can use the nippers and pull this handle out so I don't have to try to tape or paint over the color of this handle. So sometimes when I go to clean items, I don't think that it's raised. And then when I'm cleaning, I'm like, oh yeah, that's definitely raised. I definitely need to sand that down. So that's why I'm like, oh, I gotta stop. I gotta sand these down. So I'm just using my little Black & Decker sander just to make sure that this is not raised and it's nice and smooth. And I have all that prep work done and I have them on boards so I can carry them in and out of our spray room to get them sprayed. Sometimes that prep work takes longer than you think it's going to, but it's very necessary. So I'm going to my go-to of my Rust-Oleum paint and primer in the flat black and giving all these pieces an undercoat. If I know if you guys are noticing that I did not take that easel apart, the way that I'm going to be spray painting that little easel and the cost efficient of 
those hinges on that are very flimsy and I've made more damage taking them apart than it, it is worth putting them back together. So I've found out if I just spray them that I have good luck with them getting all sprayed and not making a mess, especially when I'm only going to be selling it for three to four or five, if that, dollars. And then I really love the patina of these bookends. I liked that galvanized tin that was there. So that's why I taped them down the way that I did. And then when it came to the red of that cup tree, it was just that really shiny material. Yep, I could have spent time sanding it down. There again, you have to figure out how much work you want to put into an item. And I know the way that I'm going to be sealing it in with this black and then sealing it with that top coat and painting it, that I won't have to worry about that red underneath. And for the love of cubbies, I just absolutely love being able to spray anything with a drawer, anything with a little cubby area, because having to get in there with a paintbrush without getting drips and runs, oh my goodness. Then after letting that black dry, I seal it in with using some Rust-Oleum clear coat and matte. Now this is going to be some of their finishing coat, or uh, for some of them that I'm going to proceed to be painting white, this is going to lock in that black so when I go to distress it, that black stays right there and it does not show the original color. So now what you do to one side, you have to flip over and now proceed it to do to the other side. So as I'm looking at these cubbies, I'm thinking, I wonder if I can put some feet on them. Would they sell better for me if I added some feet? So away I go to my bins of stash of little feet and wooden decor to see what I can add to these little caddies. So yep, I did pick out a few of the knobs from off of Amazon. I thought that would be a nice additive. Maybe this little wooden pieces, I'm not really sure. Um, we're still working on it, and then I definitely love these feet, and along with this little wooden piece, maybe. So I'm going to be using a Rust-Oleum's white linen. I absolutely love this paint for the way that I like to distress. So I'm going to share with you how I mix it up. I'm going to be using my Graco a True 360 sprayer. I love this thing. Great investment. And so when you're mixing up the paint, they say like a 10% water ratio, but after watching the Annie Sloan, I know I'm not using Annie Sloan, but after you're watching the Annie Sloan of how to mix up chalk paint to get it to spray, it's adding some of the water, and then you keep just stirring all those goodies together until you get to the consistency where when you lift up that stir, the paint stir that um, it doesn't worm meaning it doesn't the paint does not lay on top of the paint so that it always just falls in like water that it just blends in together so i'm really coming to love this sprayer i love that it just gets a great amount done i know there's you know he's always got the overspray when you're doing items so do you kind of like, am I wasting paint because I'm overspraying or am I wasting time because I have to hand paint each item? So I thrift a lot, so I do. we do sell a lot of small items. For me, it's the trade. It's the trade of having, hand painting items like this that I might have to do three coats on or I might have to do four coats on or I might have to deal with drips and run because of all the little areas. So you just figure out what works for you. But when I'm trying to get mass quantities done, I definitely love the sprayer. And after that first coat dries, I can go back in and do any touch up on with the second coat. It's white paint, it's paint in general. If you can cover something in one coat, 
bless you. I, I give you all the credit, but I rather not have to deal with drips and runs way early in our career as I had to try to sand a drip smooth and that is not an easy job. But I do, you know, every once in a while you do have pieces that you cannot just go to town spraying on and these birdhouses are that. I want to leave the roofs of these birdhouses black and paint the the wall, the exterior wall white. So yep, I just have to go in and hand paint it. There is always those pieces. So I absolutely love the black of this roof. So I'm just going to go ahead and tape it off. And then this roof, I don't like the green of. I want to update that to black. There's So Dollar Tree masking tape it is. I'm not really going to go in and distress this little house. That's why I did not go bother painting it black. I'm going to just be leaving it just white, especially with all those little windows. So, yep, I'm just going in with one of these um, paint brushes that have the white bristles that I just get in the same area that I'm so blessed that our Walmart is still carrying the Waverly chalk paint for how long I have no idea so every time I'm there I pick up a few bottles of it yep I might have be working on a hoard but if it's useful and you're going to use it is it a hoard I know I don't think so so yep I'm just going in with that Waverly white chalk paint and getting these birdhouses and these little houses painted now, even though I have sealed this black paint in, I'm not really sure if I did a whole bunch of taping on it, these, these roofs have a lot of texture on it. So I didn't want to have to chance having to repaint my whole roof because I took tape off and it took, took the paint with it. So I thought I'm just going to go in and hand paint it and be very gingerly when I'm going underneath that roof. I'm sure I'll have some touch up to do, but at least I'm not going to have a major touch up by the tape ripping off all the paint on the roofs. Now for this one, I'm going to go in with the Waverly ink paint and just repaint that roof. Yep, just update that hunter green. Now I'm going to go in with my second coat of white, but when I go to my second coat of white, I like to water my paint down. So in my bowl, I just add a little bit of water to the consistency that I think is controllable. I don't want it to be so watered down that it drips all over the place, but just enough to make it go on a little bit smooth, but not thick that it's going to be taken off the paint. So yep, this is what my first coat looked like as a close-up. So I'm just going in and trying to be as careful as I can. And you can see pieces and parts of the roof that I touch, but I'll go back in with that wave really ink chalk paint that's the thing that I do like about the rust-oleum paint and the Waverly ink the colors of black match so now after that white paint is drying before I do any touch up as you see on the bottom I need a little bit of touch up here and there I'm going to go ahead and distress this bird these bird houses I'm just going in with some sandpaper I'm not distressing it to overly distress it. I just want to sh show off those sharp details just taking a little bit of a wet wipe activating to reactivate that chalk paint to get it to move and a little bit of sand 220 sandpaper and then I take that wet wipe and just I want to make the rest of the paint smooth and yep you can see where I touched and messed but it's cleanable it's about what your finished product looks like at the end now I can go in after I got the white where I need it to be and touch up those areas where I oops I touched it with the white paint and then I'm going to go back in, and even though I painted the door white, I'm going to go back in and paint it black so it looks like a door, not a window. After getting all these houses where I like them, everything's fixed, everything's crisp the way I want it, I'm going to go in and seal that paint in using some Rust-Oleum clear coat and matte. I still can't believe these random finds of this arch that I found at the, one of the Dollar Generals. I was looking for something in my travels of thrifting, popping in Dollar Generals to see what you can find. And I definitely knew that I could take these up a, a different notch and get at least the $28 price tag for them. So I think that's a good investment just painting them, pay $12 for them. And Goodwill probably, if they would have had them, that would, they would have wanted at least $10 for them anyway. So I'm going in with my sanding sponge and just hitting those sharp edges, getting some of that detail to pop, making it look a little bit old and distressed. I'll take the air compressor and blow that dust all over the place. Boy, Sandy does create a lot of dust. And then I'll go in with a wet wipe and just make sure that I'm 
all nice and smooth the piece is nice and smooth and it'll probably pop those edges where the black where I sanded just a little bit more so now I'm going to go in and give some distress, uh, show off all those details on these clocks. that It was so hidden with that green, just bringing it up to date, getting all those crisp edges using, using the sanding sponge. I'll get all those edges showing, and then I'll go back in with a wet wipe and just make it pop just a little bit more and make the entire piece smooth. Now for this little box, I knew I wanted it to be just a little bit more heavily distressed. So I'm just going back into that Black & Decker little corner sander and just letting it go to town really bringing out that has some nice wood underneath it and i really want that to pop along with the black though i want the black to show too and at this point i can get that handle back on just pushing it through those holes and then just taking the needle nose pliers and pulling that in the upward position so it stays on and making sure that that sharp edge is towards the wood so it doesn't hurt anybody now that I have all these pieces distressed the way that I want them, and I'm going to seal that chalk paint in using that same Rust-Oleum in clear matte. Why, yes, I did think that was a lot of open white space on this very tall bird house, so why not put a number one and a number two like they're little apartments for the birds? There's not really room for me to put this on a stamping block, so I'm like, how am I going to do this? So, yep, I just took a piece of masking tape, and there we go. Voila, I have something to keep all my letters and my numbers centered. And then just using that stays on ink, and it will be that perfectly imperfect because this is a hard angle to film and put on here at the same time. But the nice thing about it is I could put the tape on there, and it stayed, and then I just pressed that, those letters and that number down. So then I was trying to decide, what do I do with this door? Yeah, I kind of thought, do I paint it black, make it look like an open doorway? Then I thought, you know what? I have that decoupage paper from Amazon that Tim Holtz. I'm like, why not just pick out a little bit of a pattern and just stick that just for a little bit added detail? When I first thrifted these bookends, I definitely thought I was going to do some farmhouse, a cow, something to do with that. But as I was looking through my stash, I remembered that I have an IOD transfer that the thing I did not like about it is there was four flowers that were meant to go on a piece of furniture or something else, but they were all going in the same direction. And for me, I rather had them facing each other. So this is a perfect opportunity to get it, to use some of those flowers. See what I mean? They all were going in the same direction on all four corners. So that just bothered me a little bit. But so this is a perfect opportunity to use them and for something that I had already paid for because you look at each of the sides of the bookends differently, not at the same time. Just move, remove that protective backing and now I'm just using a little bit of maxi tape just to hold them on. And I did end up ordering one of those redesigned tools and everybody gave me a lot of other ideas that I could have used. But you know, it's just fun to ha have. And I have to say it's nice and it's really easy to hold on to. So when you're rubbing on the design, you can almost tell that it kind of gets a cloudy in color that you can tell that it's releasing onto the item that you're trying to transfer it on so that I'm just trying to here lift up an edge and then gingerly work my way down making sure that all the little pieces and parts are adhered. So I'm gonna admit to you that I think Chris thought I was crazy when I said hey can we put feet on the bottom of these caddies? <laughs> There's really not a lot to screw into, and then you have to find the right tool to go from the inside down to, to screw it in. But yeah, that that was uh, just because I have a vision doesn't always mean it's always achievable. But I have to tell you that I have a good man that will problem solve with me, and we usually always end up figuring it out. So my original idea for the bigger ones that had screws in them already, we could not use. So I had to switch them out for ones that we could take screws from the inside and screw it into all the way through together. So what he did was he measured off, he squared off so he has a X so he knows where that he can have each one of them centered. And then he put a little piece of tape so to know how far to drill. But that didn't really matter because we went all the way through the bottom anyway. And then that's a really a tight space to get your drill in to 
screw something in. And for these ones, he had to, I think it, they were like two and a half inch screws to get him to put these legs on. So I'm going to tell you, I don't know if anybody else has tried this, but whew, this was not at the easiest of tasks. So yep, here's the other one. So just making a hole all the way through, squaring it off so all this all the legs will be nice and centered on each of the four corners. These ones were a little bit easier because they're the doorknobs that I ordered from Amazon and they come with screw. The other ones were feet that we buy from a gentleman that turns legs and stuff like that from our antique mall. So these are a little bit easier. So no glue really needed. It's a nice tight fit. You could have added a little glue if you wanted to. Maybe somebody wants to take the feet off. Maybe they think I'm crazy putting feet on there. But I just thought it was a nice, cute additive. Now it's time to bling up some of these caddies. So I did, I'm still on the fence about the wooden pieces, but I do know that I had purchased a whole bunch of, probably too many, of some transfers from scrapbook.com. They were having a sale. They were like $4.95 for each one of these transfers. So I'm like, oh yeah, I bought way too many of them. Now I have to figure out what to use. Uh, I don't know about you all, but if I'm gonna buy it, I'm gonna figure out something to use on it. Now the ones, these ones are not like the IOD ones where you rub them on. These ones you actually wet the backing down. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna decide what is a good breaking point to cut this in half and actually cut it into four corners for this whole, I'm gonna use two pieces on this and save two pieces for another project. Get my money's worth for my $5. The one thing I do have a hard time remembering is that these are going to go upside down. There's actually a protective coating on it, so that's what I'm going to be trying to peel off now. And so what you see, I need to flip-flop these and then put them upside down. I always forget that, and if you don't take off this protective coating then and you try to wet it let me tell you i've made that mistake before already with them but good thing they were only under five bucks not that i wanted to waste money but we all this is how we all learn so see how i have to flip that upside down that is that is the sticky side that's how they transfer and then that paper backing is the backing that i'll need to be wetting now if i read the directions right they want you to stick the whole piece and then put it on now i had a hot mess when i tried that and ended up one, I forgot to take the protective coating off one. Two, I, it ended up folding up and the transfer was folded up and then that destroyed it. So now this is the way I have learned to do it is I just let them put them down. It's a little bit sticky. It stays in place. And then I just take a little bit of a cloth and wet it down while it's on there. And you can tell you get enough water on there. It only takes like 10 seconds and you'll be able to peel that back off. Now, this is a step that I like to do. I like to take a cotton ball and a little bit of acetone. You can kind of see, I want it to look like it has aged and it's wore off, not that I cut it into two separate pieces. So what I'm gonna do is take that cotton ball and I'm just going to gently dab it and see how I'm pulling it out. What that's gonna take away is that harsh cut marker where I cut it and kind of blend it and kind of distress it into the other, into that white. So here's a close-up. This is where I've taken a little bit of the acetone, let it kind of distress it, and here's where that sharp cut line is. I prefer the little bit of the acetone. It's just what look you're going for. So now I've got this space in the middle, and I didn't really plan it. I thought I was just going to do the transfer, but I think I can add that little bit of wooden in there. I think it'd look very cute. Now the wooden and the legs do not match each other so I'm going to go in and play with a few colors to get this to look aged. So I'm going to undercoat it in black. This is that really raw wood. It just soaks that paint in. So I just, I'm in my house so I'm just using my Apple Barrel multi-use black paint. 
Now, I think I can eyeball this, but just for my OCD, my perfectionist little problem that I might have, I'm going to grab a ruler and just make sure that I am centered. So, and then I'm going to adhere it using just this, this is a nice thin wood, so I'm going to be using the Starbond Thick and the accelerator to dry it right on. And then 15 seconds and voila, it is adhered. Now as that black was dry, I thought it was a little bit too harsh. It just really stuck out, took away from that beautiful transfer. So I'm going to go in with some of the Waverly chalk paint and just dry brush a little bit of it on, kind of trying to tone down that black just a little bit. Now remember what I said, just keep doing something until you love it. Yep, I didn't like the white a little bit, so now I'm going in with some antiquing wax and just tying that all together, giving it that transfer has a little bit of a brown hue more than a black hue to it. So I'm just going to antique this just a wee bit. The same thing, just dry brushing this on. And why not? Why not make the feet, feet match? I'm going to go through and just take a wet wipe. This is really raw wood also, and I'm just going to do the same colors almost opposite colors i'm going to start off with the brown first and then work to the black and then work to the white just to make the feet match that little decal i just put on so now i'm going to use another one of those transfer me transfers that i purchased and i'm going to use this queen bee now i absolutely love the bee i love those flowers i'm going to separate these two and then I'm not really, I'm on the fence about that crown, so I don't think I'm going to keep that either. But yes, I think I'm going to be able to get at least two different transfers out of these for two different objects. So yet again, remembering to take that protective coating off before I wet it. Yeah, all those things you have to remember, all these steps. So, yep, and it's once you cut it off, there's not really, you got to have some good nails there to get your fingers in between it, but I, that's probably a good thing. Once you take that protective coating off, it is a wee bit sticky, so I'm trying to not press down it, just trying to, I can see through, I know it's probably hard to see on film, but I can see through the backing and make sure that it is centered. I'm going to apply this one just the same way, just using that little bit of a cloth and just wetting that back. And you can kind of, it'll start puckering up so you can tell that it's ready to be released. On this one, since it's clear, I'm going to go ahead and just dab off any excess water and making sure that I have it nice and smooth and adhered. Now, though, on this one, you know I have some empty space on the front of this bad boy, so I may have to do a couple green sack stripings just to fill in that space. I think that'll tie this all together. I'm just going to make two simple stripes on both sides. I don't want to take away from that transfer in the middle. I just want to add and bring your eye into it. When it comes to doing that second stripe, what I'm going to do for my spacing is I have a half inch tape is what I'm using and I'm going to center that so that line is in the middle of it and that way I have a little bit of space in between. I don't want them to be too overly close to the, the image itself. So that's what I'm just doing. That's why I like to use masking tape because I can see through it. And then I'm just going in, I'm just using that Apple Barrel Multi-Use Black Paint. And I'm only doing one coat. I don't want it to be overpowering black. And I'm actually going to go ahead and distress it afterwards. Oh my gosh, guys, would you look at that? Look at this transfer fits this other little box. Just perfect. How cost efficient is that? And then I was actually able to cut the flowers, some of the flowers off it and separate them into two corner pieces. After I let these dry on, the water distressed, or water adhered anyway, I'm going to be sealing these in with just some clear spray. I, in my house, I just have this Craylon.
So I thank you so much for watching today's video. And what did you think of these makeovers? What did you think of those transfers? Cost efficient, they were a little bit confusing maybe, but I, I think I got them down pat now. So go check out scrapbook.com. I know I love IOD stamps. I'm not, I have nothing against IOD stamps, but they're, or the transfers anyway, they are a little bit on the pricey side, but that's okay. It just all depends on what you want to do with them. So I love sharing another option. We, we all have a different value of what we can spend on our inventory, what we can spend on our supplies to use. So I like sharing those transfers with you all that there's a little bit, if you want to get some transfers that are a little bit more cost efficient, I just wanted to share them with you. So thanks so much for watching today's video. And I hope I have inspired you in any way to look at, look at thrift store finds in a new way. And again, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and checking out this content for the first time, um, please hit that subscription button if you liked it and that notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we'll see you next time, guys. Bye.